Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So today we'll, we'll discuss about the introduction to RDBMS and the basic terminologies uh, in RDBMS. So this RDBMS stands for Relational Database Management System, Relational DBMS. And the name itself indicates it will deal with the relations, all the relations. So here the relations means the data is represented. Data will be represented in terms of rows. In rows, right? So the data here, the rate will be represented in terms of rows and that we call it as a relations, right? So organizing the data in tables will be very easy to access the data, right? If any sort of the data is organized in the form of tables, then automatically it will be very easy for accessing that particular data. So that's why, so this is a relational database and a, a modern softwares will be using related to this relational database management system that is a relational dbms rdbms now we'll see the basic terminologies of this rdbms so the first one is a relation so what is meant by this relation in rdbms so this relation means table table is also known as a relation in rdbms for example, consider the student database, so student table, so student ID, student name, percentage, percentage. So this is the a table, this is called a table or a relation, it's called a relation. For example, student number is 101 and the student name is some Sandeep and the percentage is some 95 and the student number is 102 and name is some Saradi and some percentage is 94 and 103 the student name is some Deepak and the percentage is some 90, right? So this is a student table, this is a student table and this we call it as a relation in RDM, RDBMS. So here you can see we are giving the student details, all the student details are being organized in a tabular format. So that's why we call it as a relation, right? So a relation means a table which consists of rows and columns and data and the second terminology is tuples or records records so the individual row is known as a tuple so if you observe so this is one tuple and this is another tuple and this is a another tuple or we can also call it as a records so for example you can see here so this particular row, row consists of the details of a student Sandhi. The second row consists of the details of a student Saradi. Third row consists of the student details related to a Deepak, right? So that means we are having the three rows. We are having some three student details, right? Each row is known as a tuple or a record. So here we, we need to uh, remember a few things that is in tuple, there should be no duplicate values, no duplicate tuples, right? That means identical tuples should not be included in the relation. For example, we are having a fourth row 101 and uh, Sandeep and uh, 95. So if you observe here, the fourth row, the fourth row is having the unique elements of the first row. So 101, Sandeep, 95, 101, Sandeep, 95. So, this should not be accepted. That means 
no duplicate tuples should be available right and so all the tuples should follow the same format same format that means the first one student id student name and percentage so the same format should be followed for all the students right and the next terminology so these are called as a tuples right these are called as a tuples and i'm removing this one so no duplicate should be allowed in tuples right now next one attributes attributes and these attributes are known as the columns okay the columns so this is an attribute and this is an attribute this is an attribute so attributes are for the tuples so you can observe the rules are first attribute should have a name attribute should have a name to identify to name uh, should have a name to identify so here student id is an attribute student name is an attribute percentage is an attribute so here i am writing student name is an attribute sorry student id the first one is id then student name is a one more attribute percentage is a one more attribute so every attribute should have a name to identify right and also there will be a unique attribute unique attribute known as a primary key primary key to identify the tuples okay to identify the tuple there should be a unique attribute called as a primary key right for example if you take student name so sandeep so in a class there can be multiple students with the same name so it should not be considered as a primary key coming to the percentage so more than one student can get a equal percentage so for example 94 so 94 is a percentage which can be get for a multiple students right so there might be a chance so that should not be considered as a percentage so coming to the student id so student id will be the unit right so no two students will share the same student id so such attribute we call it as a unique attribute and that is we call it as a primary key to identify the complete tuple right and the next one data item so data item means the actual data so this is also called as cell data cell data so you can see this is one cell another cell another cell so these points we call it as a cells these blocks we call it as a cells so a cell is an intersection of a tuple and a attribute okay a cell is an intersection intersection of a tuple and attribute so simply we can say it as intersection of row and column so if you observe this one it is an intersection of tuple and column right so horizontal horizontal row right and a vertical column so this will be represented as tuple and attribute intersection and this data must be okay this data must be atomic atomic means it, it should have a single value the data cell or data item should have a single value right for example student id so 101 comma 102 this is not a valid so it should have only one value so 101 so student name sandeep comma abc so it is not a valid because it should have only one value so the data the cell data or a data item should have a single value a single value right so relation tuples attributes data item the next one the next terminology
is a cardinality. Cardinality. So here the cardinality means a number of tuples gives the cardinality. So he, in this example, how many tuples are there? 1, 2 and 3. So the cardinality of a student table, cardinality of student table is 3 because we are having a 3 tuples, 3 rows. So number of tuples or number of rows gives the cardinality. Okay. The next one, degree. So degree means number of attributes. Number of attributes gives the degree. So this is nothing but cardinality. And this is nothing but degree. Right? Cardinality 3, a degree 3. Because number of attributes for the student table is a 3. So degree of student table 3. Because student ID, student name and a percentage. 3 attributes are there. That means the 3 columns. Right? So the degree of a student table will be 3. Cardinality. It's a number of tuples or number of rows or number of records. The next one is domain. So domain means all the possible values given for an attribute. So attribute is a column. So we need we are supposed to give a value for an attribute, right? So, the, what are the possible values that should be given for an attribute is called a domain. In this example, consider this percentage. So, percentage will be 0 to 100, in between 0 and 100, right? So, that is called a domain. So, here the domain for a percentage is 0 to 100. So, this is called a domain, right? The possible values given for the attribute and the last one it's a null values null values so coming to this null values if a cell kept blank during a data insertion then that particular cell will be given as a null values. Cell or attribute, whatever it may be. For example, the student ID 101, Sandeep, and if you are not, I am not giving this percentage, right? I just kept blank, then it will be filled with a null value. So, this is not equal to, not equal to 0, right? So, null, the null means that doesn't, uh, implies that the percentage is zero, right? So that percentage cell has been left blank, right? So we can fill that percentage in future. So at present, that cell has been kept left. Okay. So a null value means if any cell or an attribute kept blank during the data insertion, that blank will be represented with a null. That blank will be represented with a null. And this is not equal to zero or a space or any space, right? It's not equal to zero or any space. So this is the null values. So I hope you understood the basic terminologies of RDBMS. So this is called a relation. The table is called as a relation and the rows are called as a tuples or records and the columns we call it as a attributes and each attribute we, have, we should have the name and Unique attribute should be represented with a primary key in order to represent the complete tuple. And the number of tuples we call it as a cardinality, the number of columns we call it as a degree. And domain, the possible values given for a, an attribute is called a domain. And 
null values if the cell is kept blank during the data insertion that particular cell will be filled with the null values and it should it doesn't mean it equal to zero or a space right so this is this is the basic introduction to rdbms and the basic terminology is used in the relational database management system right so hope you understood this one and if you are having any doubts regarding this one feel free to post your doubts in the comment section definitely i will try to clarify all your doubts if you really enjoyed my session like my session share my session with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel thanks for watching thank you very much